Hi everyone, thanks for joining today. My name is Chris Hammer and I lead the support team here at Mailgun. Today I just want to go ahead and just tell you about getting started with Mailgun and just give you an introduction to the platform itself, such as um, the why kind of features that Mailgun provides, you know, how to basically get your account verified, um, adding your domain and verifying it, um, the different steps that you need to send email with our service, and essentially see what's actually happening with the emails that you're seeing using our tracking features. I'll also take a, um, a brief look at our analytical features, um, and then also if you're having any type of issues with our service, what you need to do to find some help and help you get started. Um, so with that, let's talk about actually just activating your account. Now, assuming that all of you have signed up for an account, um, when you first sign up, you're going to get an activation email in your mailbox. Uh, and in the case that you didn't actually receive it, you'll, if you log in, you'll see a little yellow banner at the top, and it'll have a resend activation button. So you can always use that if um, you didn't receive the email. Um, and if you didn't receive it even after clicking that, you know, our, our support team can actually help you get your account activated. So let's say you receive that email, and if you look at the picture here, there's a little link in it that'll redirect you back to the Nailgun website. Um, what this will do is this will bring you back to our site, and we'll have a little field for you to enter uh, a phone number. What this is going to do is this is going to text you a six-digit number used to verify your account. Now, you may be wondering why we have so many different uh, steps to actually verify your account with our system. Now, with a product like our own where we just send mass email, you can imagine that this actually attracts a lot of people who look to send out spam and abuse our system. Uh, due to that, we actually have to be a little bit more strenu strenuous with our sign-up process than most other applications out there. However, once you get started, it's normally smooth sailing. So, with that in mind, after you go ahead and get your account activated, the first step to use our service is going to be to add your domain. And how you can do this is by clicking the Domains tab at the top and then clicking the little Add New Domain button. And it's going to bring you to this screen right here, which actually just has the form in which you'll enter your domain. As you'll notice on this, on this screen, we actually recommend using a subdomain with our service instead of your root domain. However, this actually just depends on your use case, but we found that a lot of customers actually have a lot more success using a subdomain because it allows them to, rep to separate their reputation and prevent any possible DNS conflicts from, from occurring. Now, once you go ahead and add your domain, it's going to bring you to another page with a bunch of DNS records on it. For the sake of actually just getting set up with our service and sending, the only records that are going to be required are the two text records, our add DNS records for sending portion of this. These two records are called SPF and DCAM, and they're just required to send a uh, valid email. And what they do is they just give Mailgun the um, authentication to actually send on behalf of your domain name. And for the most part, almost every provider out there actually checks for them. So if you don't have them, you're going to run into a lot of delivery issues. So this is just a part of our process to prove that you're the owner of the domain as well. And someone out there isn't trying to add and use your domain with our service. Now, uh, we actually have some documentation on adding these records with, um, with multiple providers out there. So now that you've got your DNS records set up, you're now ready to get started sending with Mailgun. That wasn't a sound clip. I hope you all heard that. I just high-fived some. <laughs> um, so there's two different ways to send with our service. You can either send using SMTP or send using the API. Uh, both have their pros and cons, but we generally find that um, you know, most users actually use our API instead. Um, the pros for SMTP is that it's just generally an easier protocol to send. Um, most applications out there, you just plug in the SMTP settings and you just start sending. Um, that being said, you have less flexibility over what you're trying to do, and generally SMTP is a little bit of a, a slower sending process. It's a very chatty protocol. There's a lot of back and forth between the servers, and when you're sending millions of emails, that can actually slow down the amount of uh, the, the time it takes to actually deliver that amount of emails. Um, and so that's where the API comes in. The API is, is a, a more flexible uh, way to use our service, and besides sending, almost all of our other features revolve around using the API as well. So it just makes you know, sense when you're trying to utilize the full feature set of Mailgun to just go this route instead. And a lot of our customers seem to agree. The, the API is just, it's, it's, it's extremely flexible in that it can be used with most programming languages, such as like it, as long as the programming language has the ability to make an HTTP post request, um, we'll accept it. Um, now, going back, going into the HTTP API, um, there's also two methods you can use to send via that protocol. 
Um, you could use our MIME format or you can submit an individual parts. Um, the MIME format is actually fairly similar to SMTP in that you build everything around the message and you just submit the whole, um, submit the whole message itself to our service. The um, individual parts is actually the more common way in which you would actually submit um, like the from address, the to address, the subject, um, and the text itself. And after that, we'll put it all together and make it look pretty and deliver it to the recipient server. So with that in, in mind, that's actually um, just a high level overview of how to send using our, our service. Um, are there any questions right now? I'd be happy to like kind of uh, address those about actually sending with Mailgun. So Dragos asks, how many SPF and DCIM can we register? Um, so it's domain specific. Um, SPF actually has a limitation of 10 lookups in the record itself. So if you're using Mailgun and using a bunch of other services out there, you generally, if you feel like you're gonna hit that 10, that 10 uh, lookup, then you'd wanna use a subdomain instead uh, or a different domain altogether. There's a couple of services out there uh, such as Kitterman.com or um, Words to the Wise that have some tools that you can actually see how many lookups your SPF is making. So you know how close you are getting to that, that 10 lookup max. Uh, for DCIM, DCIM is specifically set for the subdomain itself. So as long as you're not using the same subdomain as a different service, there shouldn't be any conflictions. Um, Greg asks, how do you prevent the SNTP from being an open relay? That's a good question, Greg. So with every request you make to our service, we require authentication. Um, you must use the username and password associated with your uh, SMTP account or use the API and API key itself when submitting requests to our messages. But if anybody, if nobody has any other questions, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next portion of our webinar here, which is actually just going to be uh, receive emails with our service. Now, uh, receiving emails is not a very, it's not the most common feature with Mailgun, but we actually have a lot of, uh, a lot of customers that do use us explicitly for receiving or receiving email as a side. Now, we're gonna take a little bit step back to the uh, domains portion or the DNS portion of this webinar, in which case, when you add your domain, there'll be a couple other records there called MX records. Now, these aren't required for sending with our service, but they are required for receiving. And what they do is they go ahead and they uh, determine which server should actually receive the message uh, when sending an email. So um, an example being, if you were using, say, uh, domain.com, when you send to user at domain.com, it looks up the MX records, says, hey, that, those MX records are pointing to Mailgun. So let me, I know that Mailgun is the server I should be connecting to to deliver this message. Um, now, when this, this also ties into what domain you should be using with their service. Uh, with, the, with MX records, you can only have them pointed to one environment. So you can't actually receive email at two different places at the same time. It'll only connect and deliver the message to one. So in that case, if you're trying to use our root domain with Mailgun and with Google, unfortunately you can't. You have to choose one or the other. And this is where using a subdomain or a different domain altogether comes into play. Now, what does Mailgun do actually do with these incoming messages? We don't, host, we don't host mailboxes, but we actually have a feature called routes, which will perform different actions on these messages based on filters you set um, when they hit our service. To give an example, you can set something called a catch-all, um, and what this will do is any email that's sent to your domain, it will catch that message and perform an action on it. You could also set something called a match recipient. So you could set to match specific recipients, say like user at domain.com or user one at domain.com instead of every message. And if it matches those recipients, then it will perform the action you set. Um, there's several different actions you can, you can use with Mailgun, such as forwarding to another email address, uh, forwarding to a URL or application itself, storing the message, or just plain stopping it. Um, Forwarding to another email address is actually just, you know, as basic as it sounds. Um, it's as similar as other features out there where we just catch the message and we just forward it on to the recipient email address that you specify. Forwarding to a URL is actually a bit more uh, complicated. What this is, is you can create a URL or application to receive, um, uh, receive these messages from our service. And uh, what we'll do is we'll parse the email we receive 
and we'll um, break it up into individual parts. And when we post it to your application, you can then choose to capture those individual parts and perform different actions on your end based on what you want to do. Um, a common use case for this is if you have, say, a, a forum where you want your users to be able to reply um, to the forum post and um, have it update the forum itself. So what will happen is the owner of the forum will um, create a, an email address for each specific user in their system. And um, when someone updates the forum post, it will send them an email. If that user replies, it'll come back to Mailgun. Melbourne will parse that email and then post it to their forum. Their forum will then capture, say, maybe the username and the body of the email itself and then update the forum post with that content and then just discard the rest. That's just a pretty basic use case, but there's a lot of them out there. And then from there, there's also the store feature. Um, what we'll do is we'll store the message content for up to 72 hours, which you, which you can then retrieve using a retrieval URL. Um, this is mainly used for like if you use us primarily for sending and you just occasionally get a couple of emails back. You may just want to store them temporarily and just you know pull them later on. Um, and then the last action is just stop, which is pretty straightforward. Um, this action will stop any other routes from being evaluated. Um, for example, um, let's say you have a catch-all set up to forward every um, every email sent to your domain to another address but you're retired of receiving emails from, uh, let's say, Chris. So what you can do is you can set a route with a um, match header field and set that to two address, and then furthermore, um, set it to just Chris. So what it'll do is uh, any emails that have a two field that contain Chris, it'll just stop them. So that in itself is actually going to be um, just incoming and receiving emails with Mailgun. Does anybody have any questions around this? Um, be happy to answer some questions. Uh, so Nicole asks, can we also track events for incoming emails, like open times? Uh, yes, so um, I'll get into the tracking portion uh, right after this. But um, yeah, you can, you can definitely use our tracking features with incoming email. So talking about that, um, with Mailgun, we keep track of every event that happens to your message and store this data for at least 30 days for paid accounts and two days for free accounts. So if you're just trialing our service, um, you could also put a card on file and it should bring back any of those events that happened in that time frame. How I sort of like to think of like the uh, event system is sort of the life cycle of the message. You know, it begins with the message being accepted by Mailgun, which will generate, like I said, a, an accepted event. And then from there, it has two different pathways. We'll either deliver the message or the message will fail to deliver. Regardless of what happens with this, we'll include a ton of metadata about that, such as you know, if the message failed, why did it fail, what was the error message, um, who, what was the server itself that rejected it, you know, what's the content of the message you're sending. Um, and if it delivers, we'll also include all the information. But there's also other events that can happen after delivered such as if the recipient you know, clicks on the email, if they open the email, um, if they uh, unsubscribe from it, or unfortunately, if they just don't like it and they issue a spam complaint. Our event data can be accessed in a few different locations, such as our events API, webhooks, or the logs tab of the control panel. Depending on how you actually want to utilize and get these events will really determine which method you use here. Um, our events API is a programmatic way to actually obtain this information from our system. Um, you could use many different programming languages to pull this data from our system whenever you want, um, or even filter for specific events in the case that you are sending millions of emails. Um, a good example of this is if you, a filter you can use is uh, a time frame or subject. So if you want to see all the events associated with um, a specific subject, let's say like reset password, within the last week, you could call our API for that. Um, besides that, the next step would actually be using our webhooks feature. And what differs from the webhooks and the events uh, API is that the webhooks is more of a push versus the events API is more of a pull. So uh, webhooks is actually a bit more ideal if you're looking to just consume we consume events as they are happening and less about pulling it from our service. 
It's also a way to just be notified when it happens. Um, for example, we have something called a bounce webhook, and we'll notify your application whenever a uh, bounce occurs in our system. So this is really ideal if you're sending out a lot of emails and you start noticing that you're getting a lot of bounces. And then it allow you to just look at the error message, figure out why is this happening? Um, is there a specific error? Did I not include something? Um, is it something outside of my, is there a problem with Mailgun? <laughs> I would hope not, but in the case that actually happens, you know, this is something where our, our support team can actually jump in and help. And then the last way is actually just use our control panel for this, um, specifically the logs tab. Um, there's no setup really required here. Um, we'll just log it all for two days or 30 days, depending on your account type. And um, you can just search, search it for whenever, um, whenever you want. So here's just a brief look at our webhooks page and just getting started on like setting it up. It's fairly straightforward. Um, as you notice here, for most event types, we have a corresponding webhook. So instead of us notifying you for every single event that occurs in our system, if you only care about one specific one, you can set up a webhook for that one. Um, I'm not going to go too much in the webhooks here. We actually just posted a, uh, a recent blog that goes really in depth into using a webhook feature and it provides some examples on, uh, like on some of the code you can use to capture this data and some of the use cases as well. Our logs tab, uh, here, here's a, just a picture of our logs tab. As you'll notice, there's a couple of events listed out here. One thing that um, I didn't think to include is that if you actually click on these events, you'll see just see a ton of metadata for each event, uh, and that changes per event, but every event should have a ton of uh, um, metadata associated with it. You can also use the filters on the left side if you're only looking for specific types of event, or if you're really just trying to drill down into something, such as specific errors or a specific um, like opens. Um, there's a lot of different things you can search for in this panel, as well as you know the search, the search uh, button in the top right corner. Here's another screenshot of our logs tab. This one actually includes the graph here, which as far as filtering and looking at everything, it'll give you a visual view of the different types of events that are occurring over the time frame you specify. And you can actually alter that time, time frame in the top right corner. Um, unfortunately, we'll go back more than 30 days because that's as long as we actually store these, these uh, events in our system. And uh, with that, um, does anybody have any questions around you know, just uh, tracking and the different events with Mailgun? Oh, I see Greg actually had one. Can you use the API webhooks together? Uh, yeah, you can use both of them. Um, it really, it's really up to you. Um, those are two separate services. Um, like I said, it's more of a push versus pull. Um, and really, depending on your use case, some people may use both. I find that most people actually just use one or the other. Um, but yeah, it's really up to you. Maybe you want to um, maybe you want to use webhooks to be notified of bounces, um, but all the other events you actually just want to like pull them using the API. Use you know, whenever you feel like you should do that. That's fine. Um, both are supported, and um, you shouldn't run into any issues with that. I see Ken just asked a question. All right, so what, when filtering by time, what time zone do the, the Mailgun servers use? So this actually depends on what method you're using to, um, uh, to access this data. If you're, using, um, if you're using the events API, you could actually specify what time zone you want it in. Um, if you're using the control panel, there is a time zone option in the, in the Mailgun control panel settings, and the time zone will be based on that. Um, and if you're using webhooks, it'll default to UTC time. Charles has a question as well. Um, ours is set up as our domain at I thought we were instructed in the last year or so to do it that way. Is that okay or not? Because we can't add SPF record records. So, uh, your domain dot is actually, um, a Mailgun, uh, test domain. So you can use this for testing, but not for production. For production email, you should actually use your own domain and verify it using uh, the steps we, we sort of went through earlier. Uh, TXT records, if you're using tracking, um, set up the C name record. If you're using uh, incoming, MX records as well. Um, but yeah, the mailgun.org domains are purely for testing only. So that I'm actually gonna uh, move on to the next section here, which aside from tracking different events in our system, we also, we also uh, provide some analytical features. 
to evaluate sort of how your emails are working and um, you know how they're performing and uh, just if there's any issues or anything. Um, you can see your overall analytics for your sending domains or use our tagging feature to segment your messages for more precise data. This analytic features can be accessed through the stats and tags API, or you can just use the analytics tab of the control panel. This is fairly new though. Um, for those of you who um, may have been with us for a little while, the analytics tab has only been around for a couple of weeks, if I can recall correctly. So here's a picture of our analytics tab. Um, and what you'll see here is that it'll just give you a nice overview of what percentage of your emails are delivering, uh, how many that is. Um, it'll give you unique data, such as unique opens and clicks for, your, um, for the messages you're sending. And it also gives you device data, such as like, it, are they using a tablet, or are they using uh, their mobile phone to open the message, or are they using a desktop application and outside of that, you can also filter by different providers, such as uh, Gmail, Yahoo, Comcast, uh, AOL. We basically list out all the top providers out there, and we'll give you statistics based off of that. And aside from using our control panel, uh, there's also an API which you can use to gather this information as well. So that last screenshot was more of an overview of everything that you're doing with uh, like all the emails you're sending from that specific domain. However, uh, most people and marketers specifically are trying to segment their emails and determine which email is performing better than another email. Or maybe if I change the subject slightly, do I get better engagement? This is where our tags feature comes into play. With tags, you can simply tag or label your emails with a, uh, a specific name and then we'll track how those emails are performing specifically. So you can see, hey, uh, onboarding A email is uh, performing better than onboarding B. Or actually, in this case, it actually looks like onboarding B <laughs> uh, is performing a little bit better on the click side and a little bit worse on the open side. Um, however, this is sort of the sort of data you can get using this tagging feature. Again, I'm actually not going to go too much into the specifics here. We actually released a blog about a week ago that goes really in depth on our tagging feature and provides a lot more insight and uh, information on how to fully utilize this feature within Mailgun. So outside of these main features with Mailgun, we also offer a couple different things, such as email validation. This is a fairly new feature that um, we started offering a couple months back. Well, in reality, we've actually been doing it for a couple years, but we really advanced the feature about three months ago, I want to say, uh, and added, you know, if it checks if the recipient address exists or not. Prior to that, what it used to do was um, look at syntax. You know, based on um, the domain they were using, did it um, comply with different RFC standards? Um, did the recipient domain actually exist? Were there MX records associated with it? Um, but now we actually check to see if the mailbox, mailbox exists or not by performing a connection and checking. Um, so it's, it's become a lot more valuable for a lot more of our customer base. Um, we also offer a managed email service. Um, what this is, is um, if you are sending you know, millions of emails and you're having trouble getting to the inbox, what you can do is um, our managed service will give you a technical account manager or deliverability expert who's just, this, this person is absolutely like they know all the tips and tricks to get you in the inbox and they will work with you to bring up your email reputation and ensure that you're having the best experience with the types of emails you're, you're sending. So outside of all of that, if you're actually having trouble or if you want more information about using our service, uh, this is where the Melbourne Sports Team comes in. You can always uh, open a ticket using the support tab in the top right panel. If, you're, uh, if you want to do a little bit of self-research or if you um, – are counting a very common issue. Our Knowledge Center you know, has tons of articles that just go over best practices and also goes in depth on very common issues that you're having with our, our service. Um, and also, you want some help with email deliverability and you want someone that will help you every step of the way to create a deliverability plan, that's where our managed offering comes into play. So that's actually our webinar here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and spend some time answering some of those questions in chat. Uh, so Charles asked, uh, is there a cost for the deliverability expert? Uh, yes. So there is a cost associated with our managed service. Um, 
it isn't necessarily a set price. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about it, our sales team can definitely help out with that. Dragos asks, is email validation available in the API? Yes, so um, that's a great question. I, should have def I sh definitely should have included that in there. Uh, so its primary use is actually via the API itself. Um, we do have a way to uh, use it via the panel, but it's sort of a one address at a time. Um, a lot of our users actually utilize the API, implement it in like sign up forms. So that way when someone's signing up, if they accidentally misspell their email address, it'll pop up. We even give like a little thing that says like, did you mean as well? So um, as you can probably tell from, actually let me back up a little bit. I'll, I'll show you again. Um, if you notice here from this picture on the left, uh, we offer a little bit of a did you mean, so if they mistype, say, their domain name, in this case, yahoo.com instead of yahoo.com. It's also in the case of like gmy versus gmail or gmail versus gmail. And so Jay asks, is there a way to create sub-accounts? Yes. So on our paid plan, in your account settings, you can add additional users to your account. Now, at the moment, we don't actually support different roles, but that's actually coming very, very soon. Um, so you'll be able to specify like a billing, uh, a billing person, a uh, support person, a main admin on the account. Um, there's, there'll be several different roles associated with that. Um, and you should see this launch in the next coming weeks. Uh, Peter asks, can you cover when and why to use the various access levels on a mailing list? Sure. So. Uh, for those that are unaware, we have three different access levels. It's going to be everyone, um, members, and read only. The everyone list allows just anybody in the world to send to that list. Um, I actually would not recommend using that at all. Um, sometimes what will happen is someone will create a mailing list, upload you know, hundreds or thousands of users, set it to everyone, send to it, and then what happens when people reply to that? It then sends to everybody. And before you know it, you um, You've uh, caused some problems with people receiving tons of replies that were never intended to go to them. So the everyone list is actually only recommended if you're using a very small amount of members, maybe like five or so, who like to um, chat um, with it amongst themselves. The members is, a, um, is also very similar, in which case uh, only members of the list can actually send to it. Um, this is again ideal for the similar use case in that you have a couple of people that just want to talk amongst themselves and send to that list. The read only is actually the primary method on sending using mailing lists and uh, it's what I would highly recommend um, for most general use cases. What this is is that when you actually send to the list you have to authenticate with our system using the username or password, uh, SCTP username password or the API key. So if you're just if you're just using our mailing list feature to deliver um, one message to you know, hundreds or thousands of different users, this is where read-only comes in. You would upload the list with all of the users, and then you would just send one single email to that list, authenticate it, of course, and it will deliver to all of them. Uh, Albert's asking, how can I remove the on behalf notation that shows up in Outlook? Can this, done, can this be removed via API or custom code? So with this, the on behalf notation actually shows up when the domain you're inputting in your from address differs from the domain you're using with Mailgun. If you simply align those two, that will, that will no longer show up. Uh, Dragos asks, how many subdomains can we register? Can we have a subdomain for each client, in this case where all of our clients need subdomains, and the number increases? Uh, so we support right now up to 1,000 domains. However, this limit can be raised on special occasions if you need to go higher than that. Uh, feel free to contact our team and we'll work with you there. Uh, Anders asks, can you attach custom header info to a message with API? Yes, so there is a specific header uh, or parameter you can specify. I actually think it's just, uh, it's actually just custom. So you can even, um, you prepend it with like X. So you'll do X dash and then whatever you want the header name to be. And then in the parameter itself, the uh, value, you will specify whatever content you want in there. Uh, the next question here is um, by freeiptv.com. The verification steps uh, are very hard and not clear as other web websites like Postmark. Please make it easy like Postmark. 
<laughs> um, so I elaborated a little bit earlier, but um, the reason why we have to make the verification steps a bit more difficult than other services is that there's a lot of abuse that happens with uh, products like our own. Spammers will try their best to get in our system, and we have to add a little bit of extra steps to prevent them from getting in and just ruining the environment for everyone else. Can the email validation functionality be integrated with Salesforce slash job science? Um, I'm actually not too familiar with Salesforce or job science. However, if it can make an HTTP post request, it should work without issue. Um, so the next question here is, uh, do I need to have a domain to start sending email with Morgan? Can I use my simple Gmail account? Um, there is a way you can use your Gmail account, but you do have to have a domain with Mailgun. Um, if you don't have a domain, we do provide a sandbox domain for testing purposes only, but this can really only be utilized to send to yourself and a couple of other users who've accepted an invite from you. If you want to really send email um, to, uh, like, to multiple users or tons of users out there, uh, a domain will be needed. Next question here is from Tom. And uh, it says, I'm sending a receipt from an online purchase, but the email always gets filtered as spam slash junk. I have the text record set up correctly. So messages going to spam can happen for a ton of reasons. Um, there could be like a common keyword in there that's causing them to uh, be marked as spam. It could be that the reputation of your IP address or domain just hasn't been built up yet where the provider actually recognizes it and will mark it as inbox. Um, it could be that the IP address that we've assigned to you unfortunately had a bad actor that sent some messages to that provider and caused some problems. Um, what I really recommend here is just reaching out to our support team um, and we can help you identify what that cause is and find a resolution. Um, Tom also says, uh, IE 11 doesn't seem to be working when I sign in. The application just hangs. Chrome works fine. That's a good observation. Uh, I'm not too familiar, with, I'm not aware of any issues with IE 11, but we'd be happy to look into it. Tom, if you could email help at mailgun.com with some details or open a ticket, um, our team would be happy to investigate and see what's going on. Tom also asks, do you have any examples with stacked lookups in the SPF? No, we actually don't have any of those at the moment. Uh, but I'd be happy to look into that and see if we can get, uh, get some of those posts live. Uh, so Prima asks, uh, what will be the email message format that Mailgun sends to the application endpoint in case of inbound routing? Um, so, if we're just forwarding the message, it'll be an UTF-8. Um, if we're forwarding to a URL, um, if the message content doesn't contain an attachment, it should be in um, like standard application format. And if it contains an attachment, it should be in multi-part form data. Uh, Dragos asks, can be the emails sent from my client, my client domain and via Nogun? Sure. You can send emails from multiple environments. Um, just make sure that the SPF record that you're using um, doesn't hit that, that too many lookups. But if you're just using, if they're just using one other provider in Melbourne, that should be fine. Really the situations occur with, where problems occur is when you're using like four or five different services for sending email. That's when you start running into SPF conflicts and you may want to like start using a subdomain instead of the, uh, that same domain. However, if you're just looking to use like two or three, like that should be fine. Uh, Jay also asked, you mentioned that certain keywords may cause it to go in the spam folder. Is there a way we can use the API to check the spam score for an email? Unfortunately, we don't really have an API for that at the moment. There's a couple other services out there which you can use to send a message to, and what they'll do is they'll evaluate the content and um, determine a spam score for it. Um, okay, so it seems I've gone through most of the questions here today. Um, so thank you everybody for attending this webinar and just asking great questions. I hope you got some valuable information out of this. We'll be posting this up on our blog afterwards. And so if you want to reference it further or you know, just uh, look through the deck itself, uh, it'll be posted live. We're planning on doing some more of these in the future, but if you found this was very valuable, your feedback will be great. Um, have a great day, everyone. Thank you for attending.